Welcome to First United Methodist Church Richardson Online. I'm Rohini Drake, Director of Online Ministry at FUMCR, where we welcome people for Christ, grow people in Christ, and serve people with Christ. I'm so glad that you're joining us for this very special service. Today, we're celebrating communion and also starting a brand new sermon series called Food for Thought. Over and over throughout scripture, we see the presence of food in stories both literal and figurative. Why does food play such an important role? In this series, Leading Us to Thanksgiving, we'll explore passages where food helps to shape the narrative. Speaking of food, in preparation for communion later in the service, take a minute to grab some bread or crackers and some juice or water. This week, we also observe All Saints Day. I encourage you to light a candle wherever you are as we remember and honor those who have gone before us. In a moment, we'll reflect on the names and faces of those saints who died this year. Text us the names of those you're remembering today so that we can say a prayer of thanksgiving for them. Now, I'd like to read a passage from scripture that Pastor Clayton has chosen this week. Hear these words from Revelation 7, 15 through 17. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We give thanks to God for all of these saints whose lives we celebrate and remember this day. And we are grateful for their legacy. And we know that as a church, we stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us. I'm Clayton Oliphant, pastor at First United Methodist Church Richardson. I want to welcome all of you to this service of worship. And wherever you're watching from this day, we'd love to know who you are. And, and, and um, if, if you have any prayer concerns that we can be praying for you this day, please uh, use the number at the bottom of the screen to connect with us. From time to time, people will ask me a question as a pastor, what is heaven like? As if, you know, I, I hate to burst your bubble, but um, when I'm when I was ordained, the bishop didn't whisper in my ear, oh, and by the way, here's special insight into what heaven's like, or there was not any kind of direct communication from God uh, at my ordination or my seminary graduation that would have communicated to me exactly what I would like to be able to answer to people. What is heaven like? So have you ever conceived in your mind what heaven is like? As we remember these saints who have died, what are they experiencing right now? And one of the questions I'm, I'm often asked is, is, are there animals in heaven? Will my pets be in heaven? Well, for some of, for some of us, I mean, if you're a dog person, and you've you've had a companion that like a dog that was like just part of your family. How could it be heaven without dogs there, right? And and, and if you're a cat person, well, I mean, you know, here's the question about cats: you could open the door to heaven, but would they come in, or would they just kind of like wander in and out, or you know, what what is a cat thinking anyway? But. The Bible doesn't really answer those questions for us. But um, another question I'm, I've, I've been asked about heaven, is there food in heaven? Well, how could it be heaven without some of the delicious taste and, uh, of, of food that we enjoy? How, how could it be even more heavenly um, than we can imagine with the, the richness of, of the food that we enjoy? And so I did some biblical research on this. And Isaiah, in Isaiah 25, there's this wonderful prophecy that Isaiah gives of, of this day, this day when God will, will conquer, this day when God, God's love will reign. And he says this in Isaiah 25, starting at verse six, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food. There you go a feast of well-aged wine, and he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all the people, the veil that is spread over the nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away every tear from all of their faces. And the reproach, the disgrace of God's people will be removed. Now think about that. Think about that image, this rich banquet of, of, of food, of, of um, a, a banquet of mercy, a banquet where all of the doubts, all of the fears, all of the mystery, all of the shroud that's covering us from seeing everything that God has in store for us, every, everything is lifted from us. And we are feasting at this heavenly banquet. And this, this image is given then through scripture of this, this idea of this heavenly banquet. Jesus tells a parable about this great invitation to the banquet and that some people didn't respond to the invitation. And he said, go out to the highways and the byways and compel people to come to this banquet. And, and a wonderful way to image heaven is of that heavenly banquet where one day we will feast in the presence of God. We will feast and all of our loved ones who've gone before us will be at that banquet with us. So in Revelation, as the scripture that we read for today, Revelation is kind of the confirmation, the fulfillment of, of that prophecy from Isaiah. And in Revelation 7, you read, about this amazing throne room of God. You read about, it's like you, you're lifted up into this glimpse where we get a foretaste 
of glory divine. We, we get just a, a glimpse into heaven of, of what it might be like. And, and it talks about this multitude, um, starting in, in, in verse nine, this multitude of people from every nation and tribe, from every race, from every language on the face of the earth, that all of this multitude of people have gathered around the throne of God. And, and here on this throne, they stand before the lamb. And it talks about the lamb's presence. Who is the lamb? The lamb is Jesus Christ. Revelation talks about Jesus as, as both the lion, the, the, think, think, thinking of the, the strength and the power of Christ, and the lamb, the merciful shepherd who guides us, who is with us. Jesus is the lamb that on the throne that we, that we worship. And so it talks about this amazing scene of the throne room. And then it says this in the verses that we, that we read today. Uh, Therefore they are before the throne of God and they serve God day and night within the temple. And, and the one who sits upon the throne will shelter them with his presence. We'll find shelter in heaven. They shall, listen to this, they shall hunger no more. So to me, that means that they, there's, an, there's an all-you-can-eat buffet in heaven. If we will hunger no more, it's all the food we can eat. That's the fulfillment that, that Revelation tells us of the Isaiah prophecy, that our hunger will be filled and our thirst will be quenched and there'll be no more hunger and no more thirst. And most importantly, listen to this, um, the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eye. Isn't that a beautiful image? God will wipe away every tear from their eye. That's heaven. That's the promise that's given to us. That's what awaits us, a place where our, our, our hunger will be no more and every tear will be wiped away. Today, as we celebrate the lives of our saints who have died in this last year and those who've gone before, we think about so many people in our lives who've blessed us and made a difference. And as you think about them, as you, as you remember them this day, it brings a tear to our eye as we think about people who were so special to us and their absence, their absence causes us pain inwardly. We, we feel that, that void and we, we cry tears today in a, in a very healthy way. We cry tears for those who have gone before us. But we remember this promise, this, this, this promise that, that God has offered to us about our future, that there will be a day when we gather at that heavenly banquet with all those who have gone before, all those who love the Lord and all those who have responded to this invitation to the banquet will gather at this feast and we will be one. And there will be no more hunger and there will be no more thirst. And all of our tears that we cry here on earth, every tear will be wiped away. So today, as we enter into a time of communion, I want to invite you to do something very special. I want you to remember that as you receive this meal, you're not alone. You may be alone watching this, this service, but you're not alone because God is with you. But also this promise that we're given of the communion of the saints, that we're part of this, this body of Christ. And there's no, no separation between those who have died and those who are still here on earth, that there is a holy communion in the mystery of God's grace. We are joined together as one. So I want you to image someone or several someones who would join you for this communion meal today. I want you to remember someone who's been special in your life, someone who has blessed you, someone who has fed you, someone who has 
been integral to your own being and has poured in their love to you. And I want you to remember that they're joining with you at this table today. And that as we gather in the presence of Christ, that we join with a host of those who've gone before us in celebrating the good news of the victory of God's love over death and this promise that awaits us, this promise of a place with an all-you-can-eat buffet and you never get fat from eating all that rich food. And more importantly, we're all together in the presence of our Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for this promise of heaven. And we don't know entirely what it will be like, but we know that you have promised to be with us. And as you have led us through life, so we can trust in you to be with us on the other side. And we know because of what you've done for us through your son, Jesus Christ, that death is not our final destination, but we have a home that waits for us, one that is not made with earthly hands, a home that is eternal in the heavens. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We want to invite you now to join us for a time of Holy Communion and leading us in the communion liturgy, I want to introduce church member Elizabeth Bennett. We gather around at an open table, just as Jesus did with his disciples the night before he died. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to gather around at this table. And as we gather at this table, we remember that table in the upper room where Jesus gathered with his disciples. And there he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. When you drink this cup, remember me. And so it is in remembrance of all that God has done for us and especially in the gift of Jesus Christ who has defeated death and promised us eternal life that we gather around this table today remembering those saints who have gone before us and remembering that in the mystery of God's grace, we commune with them this day. They are with us. And God's Holy Spirit is with us. And we pray that that Holy Spirit would fall upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. Let us join together now as Elizabeth leads us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We invite you now to receive these gifts of God's grace.
Thank you so much for joining us today. If you'd like to support the mission of FUMCR, you can give by going to the link on your screen. If you were moved by this service, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the FUMCR YouTube channel. By subscribing, you'll see any new videos we post like the weekly worship services, special messages from our pastors, and videos of some of the music featured in the services. This week, we celebrate Veterans Day. If you're a veteran, thank you so much for your service. And if you know a veteran, make sure you thank them this week. Thanks again for joining us, and we hope you have a great week.